when you saw the title, Create Your Communication Connection, you might have thought, Tim, I don't need a communication connection. My communication's fine. The way we do things at all state is we got meetings that I go to, a little off the cuff speaking, or sometimes will be one on one feedback situations. But I don't have a problem with my communication. My communication is perfect, thanks, but uh, I'm just here to watch, not to buy. And I get it. I really do. Because I thought the same way. When I first started out in my career, I started, I thought, hey, my communication is fine. I got no problems with my communication. Everything is just perfect. But I discovered not only wasn't it fine, but I almost lost my job because of a failure of communication. I'm a professional secretary. That's my, my day job. Night job, professional speech coach. Day job, professional secretary. So what happened was I've got a guy in my desk, Ted. Now, Ted's a big guy, brown hair, tall guy. He's the director type, large and in charge. You know, people like that, they're just strong, authoritative. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Met anybody like that before? Don't point. <laughs> exactly. That was the way Ted was. And he flew to New York every week. Every week he'd go to New York City. And I, he, book everything at the last moment. He'd book his plane at the last moment. No big deal. But he'd also book his hotel at the last moment. Now the thing was is that his hotel would change from week to week. It just depended on whatever the hot hotel in New York was at that time. But he'd always want the most popular hotel in New York City, and he'd book at the last moment. Now, Pat, I know you've been to New York. Anyone else been to New York? Familiar with it? You know? It's big, right? A lot of people. Back me up here. It's big, yeah? They're just wall to wall. If you haven't been to New York, it's wall to wall people. If you don't book things days, weeks, months, <laughs> years in advance, you're not getting in. This guy was booking things last moment and expecting me to put them in there. It wasn't going to happen. So week after week after week went by and Ted wasn't getting his hotels. One day he came out to me and says, Tim, come into my office. I got up and thought, I think I know what this is all about. Ted sat down in his big chair, put his elbows on the table, and said, Tim, why aren't you booking my hotel? Now, I knew he was going to ask me this eventually. And I kind of had it straight in my mind what I was going to say. But as I looked across the table at Ted, I suddenly realized I had no clue what to say. I thought, maybe I should say, Ted, you have to book your hotels earlier. That sounds aggressive. I don't want to do that. No, no, Ted, Ted, you have to make sure that you tell me in advance what hotels you're going to. Maybe not that. Ted, just don't ever go to New York. <laughs> that didn't sound good. And suddenly I realized what was going through these things in my head. Nothing was coming out of my mouth. All Ted was seeing was. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked over at Ted, and he was not amused. So I thought, I gotta say something. So I said, Ted, I'll book your hotels when I can. Sorry, I gotta get back to my desk. More weeks went by. Then the phone rang one day. I've got a headset, so I put on the headset. It was Julianne. Now Julianne is my supervisor. She's a supervisor of the division I work in. All the, all the secretaries work in division. Julianne super, supervises the entire division. Okay. And I said, Tim, why aren't you booking Ted's hotels? I said, well, Julianne, the problem is that Ted always books at the last moment. He's not prepared. I, I can't book that. He says, Tim, did you tell Ted that? Not exactly. We had a talk about it, and we said we'd kind of work things out, and uh, no, no, Julian, I, 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 Ted called me his office, but I, I could just, he's kind of scared, I couldn't explain it. Tim, you have a serious communication problem, and you've got to solve it. There's a Toastmaster club starting up, I strongly suggest you go to it. 
and we will talk later. So that was my introduction to Toastmasters. And I thought, okay, I'm highly motivated now. <laughs> and I got better fast, because I did the work. I put myself in there. I got involved. I got better and better and better. And eventually, finally had that feedback session with Ted. I realized what I'd done wrong and what I needed to do. I knew how to handle off the cuff. I knew how to handle feedback. It started to make sense. Today, I work at Deloitte. I've been a secretary for over 10 years. And every now and then I get a little award here, a little award there, a card here, great job this, great job that, Tim. I think it all goes back to that time when I had that communication connection straightened out. Most recently I'm a professional speech coach, helping anybody get from wherever they are to wherever they want to be in their speaking. The reason I go through all this stuff is because the reality of communication in business is by the time you realize you need help in communication, it's probably too late. I was lucky. I was very lucky. I could have been gone like that. And in this day of people going, leaving, coming, of the problems of getting promoted to that next level, being more and more distant, just staying in the same place is more and more important, it's a challenge. It's the best thing you can do improve your communication skills because you never know when you're going to need them. And you may think you're prepared, you're fine, but have that high pressure situation come up, you haven't thought it through, you haven't worked it through, and suddenly there you are freezing, not knowing what to say. Well, that can be a career changing and a career ending moment. And about now, you might be thinking, this guy is going to go on and on and on talking about all this stuff. This is going to be a death by PowerPoint situation. Maybe a quote from Mark Twain is starting to come up in your mind. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. I want today to be interesting, interactive, and to help that out. What I'd like to do is for a little bit later, you'll be doing a little bit of interaction that are talking to each other, and I'll get some people to volunteer. Is that okay if I get volunteers to come up here a little bit? Okay. Wow, great. It's like I'm in a Toastmasters audience already. This is wonderful. <laughs> but also, something to, to think about is what are your communication challenges? So uh, briefly, for a minute, I want you to discuss amongst yourselves, talk with your neighbors, your friends, people around you, what are either your communication challenges Communication challenges you know what somebody else has, or communication challenges you've heard about. Just talk amongst yourselves and for a minute, and we'll come back together and we'll share what you talked about. Okay? Start. Go ahead. Well, some of the communication challenges I have um, any time I go out in court I see the judge standing sitting on the panel and have no idea the line. I'm so Every now and then, yeah. It depends. But yeah, for the most part, I think it's true. Anybody? 
Three talking about it. What are some communication challenges? She mentioned a very good one. Yeah. Passive aggressive people. Passive aggressive people. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's a challenge right there. Yeah. Now, granted, in being in Toastmasters, you aren't going to hopefully get too many passive aggressive people. Try to filter those people out the door or change their uh, change their approach. But the thing you will learn is how to stand up in front of people and get the confidence to stand in front of people. Sometimes it's just a matter of just being confident and seeing the situation all the way through. Passive aggressive, great. Another couple, yes. Uh, Julie and I are in different fields, but we both came uh, with the same issue, and that is taking a bunch of information, kind of distilling it down and, and synthesizing or summarizing it in front of someone exactly. very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Again, okay, when you get to the feedback portion, talk more about that. How do you really handle feedback? What are sort of the three steps of feedback, and how do you work that out, and how a speech can actually help you develop more effective speech and feedback techniques. One more. Yes? The so-called 30-second commercial about your business, a brief moment where you try to be persuasive and engaging about what you do. Ah, and of course in Toastmasters it's called the icebreaker. It's that chance you've got to really explain yourself and get that connection. Toastmasters is the first speech you do, as you say, that may be the most important speech you learn for the rest of your life. All right, got a lot more to come. But first of all, what you're going to learn is you're going to learn about the three phases every speech goes through, why it becomes more difficult for each phase. The most difficult, the hidden phase, most people don't know about. Secondly, you're going to find out about feedback and what stops most people from giving effective feedback. And then finally, you're going to talk more about how to go off the cuff speaking, what the problems with off the cuff speaking, and also feedback, what the third step is of feedback that most people leave out. I can make sure you don't leave that stuff out in there. I think I will. Thank you. Thanks.